What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. What do you think it means when they say crank songy oh, 90s? God. What oh. do you think it means, Greg? I can, I can, because we can find out right now because we have the Hispanic heartthrob, Texas treat, Latino heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds, the globe trotting, head trotting, nitro rifle from twitch.tv, Andy Cortez, Mr. Cortez, aka Standy Cortez. What's a soggy 90? It's like Nick has picked up every word we've said in the last two months, but doesn't it does it doesn't I don't know the appropriate time he doesn't to put know those what in conversations. It means. <laughs> yeah, it's a parrot. Like, it's hello, a parrot hello, you know? Queen of England. How are your soggy nineties today? Nick, oh, governor. Nick's vocabulary has drastically changed in the last huge, two bro, or three bro. months. But he's not using and it. Right. You know what I mean? He's it's just got, I've got it. to imagine that D's just like, what are you becoming? Um like <laughs> I'm trying Which to. She just hears him screaming about soggy '90s from the other room, and that's no. The thing, the thing you don't understand is I don't bring this shit home. I know we're all working from home, but this uh-huh. room that you see, this uh-huh. is the creative space where there are no boundaries, right? This is the stage. This is where <laughs> we just we're just no judgment here. No judgment it's in here. Jazz. Little, like, exactly. Yeah. Um, out there, I go out there. Um, I'm just getting. Uh, I'm the Postmates guy. I'm basically the guy that has to go down and get the Postmates. Fair. Uh, Fair. I'm the one making sure the you know we're we're doing the errands on the weekend. Uh, I'm getting up a little earlier than I like every day on Saturday and Sunday. I'm that guy out there here, King of the Castle, Godzilla, King of Monsters. And rounding out our quartet today is our special guest. He is Danny Jollis. You know him as a comedian. You know him from my crazy ex-girlfriend in the live chat right now, Madeline Stanley, freaking out because she loves the show. Uh, Danny, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm doing good, <laughs> you know? Send the bar nicely, you know? It's just, you're doing, I'm, you're doing. I'm doing, you know, you know how uh, things went into a tailspin and yeah. then it's now better? Yeah. So it's like we're here now. We're, we're doing pretty good. Nice. Uh, you know, I same it's really relating to uh, to Nick over here doing a lot of we my my fiance and I we do a thing where we uh, we we her the bedroom becomes her office and the living room becomes my office sure. and then we yeah. we separate and we don't talk and then at some point and then I I only thing I'd add is I do trash every day. I'm a big trash. Oh, I do trash. Guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 trash guy too. Trash mm-hmm. guy. We have uh, we Got we it. unfortunately have a trash can. The area for our trash can because our apartment is small um, is not big enough to not take the trash out every day do you guys have the same, same issue yeah same so here. i'm i'm doing trash more than i ever thought a man could have to take trash out like I has tra- a, between yeah but sorry between go ahead. the trash and the boxes yeah oh the, boxes. the amazon the box boxes build come on yeah it, has it that, yeah. has it come full circle for you yet where You've done the full sort of Shawshank Redemption where you, at first you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. This trash is terrible. And then you just give into it and then you find meaning in it and then you escape it. Like, have you mm-hmm. have you had that happen? Yes. Okay. Yes. There are, there are times where I'm, I'm – yes, it's like my thing and, and it's nice. I, it's the, the most separation we – particularly – you know, during the dark, the darkest of times where we were really locked inside, like that was my big excursions. That was my big to the adventure dumpster. Of the day. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's my yeah. big. Yeah, that's huge. Big, that's huge. Yeah, so exciting. So I, I imagine you going out there, out. going out there with like the little uh, what's it called? The little like you had the picnic thing on the stick. You have like all your supplies in there. Like and a you oh, a bindle. You have a bindle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah a bindle. Like a yeah. Maybe bindle, it's gonna be yeah. a three day trip. Who knows if somebody picks me up on the that's way to the trash? Bro. Maybe I can. Uh, hitchhike on the way over there. Who knows? I want you I to know to. that's Every how you then. know, Nick. That's how you know somebody has made this joke too many times. Where I know the name because I got you <laughs> know the stick that like a cartoon um, homeless man would have if he was bindle. riding the rails. Bindle. Thank you. Everybody. Bindle. That's. That, I'm always so impressed when people know those obscure things. Like my wife knew the name of the spikes on a fork. I was like, oh, there's some schmutz in between the, the spikes and the fork. She goes, you mean the tines? And I'm like, what? No, what? Like, that's a fu- like, why does anyone need the name for that? Just call them the spikes on a fork. I don't understand smart people. The what? The tines? Look, I'm, I'm going to say right tines. now, that's not, that's not impressive. Those people, like, no offense to your wife, Nick, but, like, those are book readers. Get out of here, book readers. Get out. Sure. Yeah. Get out, yeah. book readers. Oh, my gosh. They are called tines. You're so <laughs> no, right. I, you know, I'll never forget either when, when I was – I used to uh, – when I was working with my brother, my brother's a set designer and scenic artist and, and does all of our stuff. But um, I was like, we need that material that's like picnic table stuff. And someone said, gigum. And I was like, that's get not a real fuck fucking, out of here. gigum is not a real word. And then you look it up a week later, like, oh, I'm so stupid. I went to a UC. <laughs> I should have gone to a private school. <laughs> I didn't mention any of the classes. <laughs> How many times is, is the right amount of times for a fork? 
I think four is kind of four, the center. Four, yeah. Because yeah. I tell you what, I just Googled an image right now, and there was about 38. I, I lost count how many times you're on this damn fork. And I, I way too excessive. I hope it's a Photoshop. I hope somebody By Photoshopped the way, that. I just got the obligatory, you've left the door open. So my yeah. wife's arm just yeah. reached in, grabbed the handle, and slowly closed the door. And I love Fair. her to death. She, didn't, said, even, she didn't look at me. She was just like, up. stop talking about me. Stop talking. <laughs> Let the guys do their job. Yeah. 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 I, I, I ran into a situation recently, Greg, where the the neighbors downstairs moved. Uh, or neighbors downstairs moved in. And Okay. And now hold on time out. Are these yeah, the ones the we, ones who left are the ones who got mad at you for streaming, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they'd get mad at what me are, for yelling. Looks, and, and just to catch me up, oh, sorry, hold on. You, this is uh Danny, Danny the comedian. What, what you have a question? Go ahead, Danny. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's we call on each other the same way from where we are. <laughs> the press pool. That's what I figured. Um uh sorry, your downstairs neighbors had issues because you were streaming? Yeah, I stream on Twitch, uh I yell, play video and they, games. No, I understand online. that, but the, you just were loud? Yeah, I'd be loud from time to time. So here's the thing. Like and I, I understand because he's bad at games and so he'll die a lot and be like, come on. And so so like I, I, under, <laughs> I understand this sort of thing maybe happens at midnight. All right, Andy, tone it down. But then it started getting at 745, 812 p.m., 832 p.m. They're knocking Ridiculous. on the ceiling. Well, but... And it's like the noise ordinance is 10 p.m. in San Francisco. Deal with it. Buy a fucking fan. I bought a floor fan because the neighbors before you, I'd always hear them fucking knocking boots at night right yeah, had a four fan like can't that. hear that anymore <laughs> which hey let's be honest it was awesome for the first two minutes every single time it happened and then after yeah, that it was like awesome. come on what are you fucking showing off why are you I was gonna say, what, what are you trying to prove here all right you, <laughs> get done <laughs> so so what over. i was gonna get to is that i've i've been living large all right everybody i my our roommate moved out so it's just me barrett and Alyssa. downstairs completely clear what does that mean so much space for garbage oh, like because we share mm, well, we're not not that we share but we have two garbage uh uh things <laughs> two garbage bins. we have two recycling or? bins yeah we have I two garbage that's, bins. I thought that's where he was going with that kevin i thought he was storing garbage in the center room i was like no, you're no, not no, gonna no. want that for much longer <laughs> two recycling bins and then we have the compost but i've just been living it up because you know i we all get amazon packages all the time plenty of space to throw things away but now the space has been taken away and now i gotta sort of realign myself and find my new normal of sharing the oh, bin again or of only yeah. having one bin essentially got it. so, so i got the this trash bin out there yes yes yeah kevin downstairs because like hey. you know for the longest time when there were neighbors down there i'm walking all around the fucking neighborhood looking for bins at 2 33 a.m oh, you know sure anybody's got a little question, question. Yeah. Uh, one question old man old man question for danny okay window, i'm sorry this is nick scarpino kind of funny.com now dan and we have because this is this has been this has caused a chasm in the kind of funny group you're in. I assume you're in LA. You're a comedian. You, you, the, yes. This, the, you have the nice LA sunshine. He's like on TV. Now. Of course, he's there. Of course, I imagine he's in so. LA. <laughs> Where do you come down on? Listen, the pails over the overflowing. Do you use your neighbor's pail? Do you go over? Oh. Do you ask them, or do you sneak it in, or do, is this just a no go for you? I, I personally have. I have a very big fear of being yelled at. <laughs> Dude, uh, I'm right there with you. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm a big believer in what is not going to get me yelled at today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I would probably not do it. I, I, we also have a, I will say our place, we have a big, like just a massive trash dumpster. thing for all, like the, dumpster. all the units. Yeah, that's okay. the word. <laughs> you know, that's a, yeah, that's that's a tough word also. That's one of those tough words we were talking it's a about. Right? Yeah, it's like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like time. <laughs> dumpster? Uh, is that what we say? Um, so oh, you dumpster. book reader with your dumpster. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> big word. Uh, so, yeah, we have a big dumpster. So I don't have to worry about it too much. I will say I got yelled at for not breaking down cardboard boxes oh, early yeah, in that's the pandemic. Amazing. I got, I got uh, nailed. You got you to get yelled down, at. That's dude, the thing that drives me crazy. That's what drives me crazy. Like you live in the apartment building where it's like, yeah, I go down there and I have my box cutter and I cut it. It says to put it in two by two. I cut these boxes up. I'll sit up here and this is what by two me. is it's, ridiculous. I will sit up. That's hey, ridiculous. you get more in the bin the way you get way no. more in the bin that uh, way. Andy, I'm like over here. Like I cut them. I cut them all up. I bring them down there. By the time Nailed I get it. back upstairs, we've already got three more Amazon packages. You know what I mean? I can yeah. never be yeah. on top of the box. But see, you this can is see them, you can see them creeping out right there. They're creeping this out. This is what I'm talking about about the process, right? You got your box. Yeah, look, you got your box graveyard too. We're all living in this. Same nightmare. <laughs> I, I just I, I, hold on, real camera. This, this, I've sort of had this revelation because I remember on one of the first podcasts I was on this show before it was kind of funny podcast. It was the Game Over Greggy show about three years ago, too and much, too much detail. somebody said if you have three, if you have three too wishes from a genie, what would you pick? And um, the person said I would wish 
to have to be able to make cardboard vanish out of thin air. And all of a sudden, that. that's a fucking weird wish. Why would you wish that? And now I get it. Sure. I'm right there with sure. him. Met, like, I mean, of course, that person could have said any material, right? But they said cardboard only. But I feel that now. I feel the cardboard is like I, I'm overrun with it. Everybody, like I, I I'm but like the, a Thor and Oaken shield in uh, in the thing. Hobbit with the gold should, everywhere. Except it's we should take cardboard. it back. This is where we can that. turn the corner right now. In our chat, Joey Noel says, "Lowell, my pile of box shame is just off camera too." Kevin, throw up the five person thing. Joey, come show your pile of boxes. I'm <sighs> Joey, gonna go show us up. Pile. I don't, I'm gonna I show don't my bad that, that power here. While she's doing, I guess I could. I could. Yeah. While so Kevin's fun. doing that, here's yeah, what here's what I'm gonna tell you guys. Uh, You're missing see. out on one of the most amazing oh abil- like things that you can use to meditate. So to me, I love doing dishes and I love cutting boxes. Why, Kevin? Same reason you love psychopath. cutting boxes. I look. Psychopath. It's so fun. Psych- not, yeah, no, it's not because I'm a psychopath no, and no, I no, secretly he, wish they were he, they Nick, were human here's beings. Thing, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What is there any better feeling than putting a new blade in a box cutter? Oh, you know what I mean? Where no, you're like, no, oh, no. this well, is I gonna cut right through that. This is gonna cut I right day, through all this last night. Yeah, I the other day, all of it last night. I go to cut down a big box, right? Big box, big thick box. And I go and I'm like, I gotta do it, Kev. I put it on the mm-hmm. cement, cut mm-hmm. through, mm-hmm. dulled the mm-hmm. shit out of the blade. The shit out and I literally no I looked at it and I was way. like, no I'll see you later, blade. <laughs> gotta gotta swap it around, put a new blade there it on. Is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, here you, we yeah. talk about you know you talk about the Danny words thinks we're here. Psychotic. <laughs> I, I, we're I, psychotic. I will say you lost me on box cutters. The, this what? box cutter thing is strange. Oh, yeah, it's, I use, it's a strange. Well, fetish, see, yeah. this is because you don't cut use, up your boxes. First off, I use scissors. I use scissors, scissors. You're most of the time. Tired your hands. You heard me, scissors, and I'll say it again, <laughs> scissors. <laughs> and, and another thing, it's the poor man's box cutter. <laughs> I'll rip them. I'll rip Amazon boxes oh. all day. Yo, that feels great. Them. Yeah, but you see the problem. Un- you're getting on un- even things. Got to go two by two down there. And this is you're talking about words oh. being the trouble, Nick, and not knowing what you call the the pointy ends of forks. I've already forgotten. I'm gonna call them Times. bindles. That's Times. a bindle too now to me. All right. <laughs> I, I don't I'm know. If text you remember. my wife and see if she knows that word. <laughs> Go I don't ahead. know if you remember this, Nicholas, but when we first started kind of funny out of the spare bedroom, we were inundated with boxes. There's boxes all the time. And this is probably sick. shows the amount of knowledge I have in my head where I had all these boxes Every piling up constantly, boxes. right? And I was like, I'm sick of using scissors like an idiot on these boxes, tying my hand out. I remember you got, the, you got the fucking leaf shears or whatever they were. I right? went to the hardware store and yeah. I was like, what could I get to shears. fix this? And I was like, I need to cut up boxes. What should I buy? And I bought aluminum cutting shears. Yeah. These gigantic scissors to cut through. And it would be years later when we moved here that I was like, man, I'm this sucks for cutting up boxes. And I'd be like, if only there was a... Like a box, box cutter. cutter. Yeah. And I went and bought a box cutter like a moron. I've been using it for years, not remembering there's a goddamn stupid now, see, ass box I, cutter. I have a box cutter that I got. I inherited from big old Lou Scarpino, right? Oh, nice Lou Scarpino heavy. never, my father never threw a tool away. Sure. If it could be fixed, if it could be soldered, if it could be welded. That's or such or, a dad thing. It that was, is such I, a I, dad trait. Danny, I have this fucking box cutter. I can go get it right now. It's like, <laughs> please, it's I want to see it. I it's would love to see some this. some. I'll, I'll get it. A sec- I'll get it right now. Actually, fuck it. I'll get it right now. All right, cool. It has yeah, here, blood on it from. Some... It has bl- unidentified blood on it from the '80s. Like, who knows who the blood belongs to? Andy, I want to go get my DNA. box cutter too. All right, so you in- intro the show. Andy, I'm holding. Hey, everybody, my box welcome cutter. to the Kind of Funny Podcast, where each and every week, four sometimes five best friends gather around these microphones, each talking about whatever they want to talk about for Look that week. This, uh, this doing the old intro. school Stanley ni- 99E the box intro. cutter. He's, shut up! He's doing the intro. Let me get through it. This is first time. Look at if thing. you're a Patreon Look member, you can watch live. If not, uh, you can watch on YouTube.com slash kind of funny like you are right now. Or like the people in our chat. I'm just going to guess it's who's in our chat right now, uh, I'll, Kevin. Give I'll, names, I'll let you know. Lexi yeah. G. I'll... Lexi G is yeah. here. Yeah. Lexi Gunner's here, of course. Ride or die. The Lou. Who, who else? Chance Carter. The Lou. Shane. Espinal. Gifted Dim. E-Spinal. <laughs> I haven't seen Demetrius yet. Okay, fuck. De- Bitsy Tula. All right. <laughs> just try to make up a name and just actually bring up our friend Bitsy. No, that, <laughs> that was, was that like, was that was the <laughs> joke when when Tim was trying to figure out how to say Bitsy's name. He googled oh, it and there was a okay. YouTube channel that m- purposely mispronounces names. So, yeah, so they're like they're like how does it say how do you say Bitsy Tula? And, they, and it was like Bitsy Tula. <laughs> the the weird lunch. energy on this show right now. Weird. Energy. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. I want you. I, the warning was when Nick got here. He said big tongue energy. Today. No, Danny, you're great. No, it's no, it's not your fault. No, it's not you, Danny. No. So yeah, Nick, we have. Yeah. Very, I mean, I have the more new one. Of, like, get these scissors out of here, Danny. 
Danny. You're insulting uh, the show. You know what those are? Those are, those are the rich man's box cutter, and I don't like it, Danny. I don't like <laughs> not, you coming in here with that TV energy. Too. That's the thing. Not, not what I like about my little one is it's got it's got the information for the hardware store there. If you're ever in the sunset and you need something, Progress to, Hardware. <laughs> Progress Hardware. <laughs> no, I just have this old school Stanley that's like every single time. Mine has the. You have uh, to unscrew the one screw and, and put yeah. the blades in, and I always cut myself. Mine has the information too. It says China. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna want to go back to China to refill that blade. Um, Damn. You know, presumably Shanghai. Yeah. Okay. Presumably. Uh, yeah. Some housekeeping for you. Remember, of course, ladies and gentlemen, Godzilla in review is still going on. We've gone through Godzilla. We've gone through Kong Skull Island. This week is Godzilla King of the Monsters, and then Godzilla versus Kong is next week. We rank and review them all on YouTube.com slash kind of funny in review podcast services around the globe. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers at the nanobiologist, a.k.a. Mick Averson, at the Nano- nanobiologist, Mick Averson, <laughs> DJ Kento, Devin Carter, Steve Powers, Ryan Trimble, Kieran O'Donnell, Joy, a.k.a. Joseph O. Youssef, Aaron Horan, Bill Abui, Julian, the gluten-free gamer, Danny Rodriguez, and Rachel Gray. Today we're brought to you by The Blessing Show, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, Danny, you're fitting in perfectly. You're being oh, a goon. So I-, I can't believe you cut up boxes with scissors, but if somebody doesn't know you, who are you? And sure. Uh, I am a, an actor and comedian uh, in L.A. And uh, I was on uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is my biggest credit, but I've also done a bunch of TV. I've also, and I believe this is where uh, we first met Greg, uh, but I, t- I always like to mention this in my thing because it's probably the thing I'm most proud of, which is I was in a sketch group called Sasquatch, still making things, despite the fact that nobody's ever in the same town anymore. Uh, <laughs> but we yeah, will never trouble. we will never stop uh but Sasquatch comedy, and then, uh, but the reason I'm here today is because I have a free special on YouTube that I dropped, and I would love for people to check it out. And, you know, from Virginia, nice guy. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> Your business nice card from in Virginia, there. nice guy. Nice guy. Uh, tell me about nice the special. Uh, where is it, and then, like, what is it, like, pre-COVID, during COVID? Where are we, where are we in, in the time? Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. Okay. Took, a, took a chance. It's called Six Parts. Uh, what I did is there's a company called Don't Tell Comedy, um and they do shows basically anywhere but a comedy club uh and i loved that and so we did six uh 10 minute chunks one's in a barber shop one's in a surf shop one's in a uh we did an art gallery a bunch of different places and each and each is a 10 minute chunk it makes one special we did it pre-covid we then waited until the world was slightly less on fire and then <laughs> we finally and then uh, yesterday it came out, and I'm so proud of it, and uh, I'm so excited about it. And, and it's it was a you know going back to the SAS, going back to that YouTube days of like I could have you know there was a lot of options to put it behind a paywall or just put sure. it on a streamer and like and then nobody would ever know you know like I'd post once mm-hmm. and I'd be like cool and it would be gone. Congratulations, and, and I, then never watch it. Yeah, yeah, no one ever watches it, and I'd be like great, but you know, and I was like I really believe in this thing, and so I'm just gonna. I'm going to lose every dollar and I'm just going to put it on YouTube for free. <laughs> it's literally, there's no way for me to make money, but it's on YouTube for free. So uh, I just hope people watch it, but I'm really proud of it. And I think it looks, it looks, it, it is, it looks so much better than most YouTube specials because yeah, it's actually YouTube like YouTube specials. Yeah. And let's talk about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really proud of it. That's and, really cool. Uh, I, I mean, the, 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 the thing is that, like, I feel like it's counterintuitive because a lot of people would say, hey, you know, you're putting something out there and you you don't necessarily have a plan um, to get the revenue back for it. But what a lot of people don't realize now is, like, it's it can be so it can be such an incredibly powerful tool for a comic to put out really good material online, um, as opposed to a lot of my friends who are comics who are just putting out, like, I had a thought. Let me put it on, you know, on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. But, like, on you're a Twitter, putting out a, a tweet, yeah. right? You just throw it and it's gone. And it's fine and it's gone, but like I've seen, I've seen, you know, comics who have risen to extraordinary prom- prominence over the last two or three years by just saying, fuck it, I'm putting it on there. I love this joke. It's, I've, I've been developing this, 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 uh, you know, five to 10 minute bit or whatever for a long time. Throw it out there and you get it back, but you just don't know how it's going to come back, but it's going to come back. You know what I mean? It's very weird. Yeah. And, and I, and I like to think of specials also, the, and, and, you know, I started really thinking about it this way is like they're basically just walking, talking billboards for your tour yeah, for sure for sure you know so it's like it's like the album I'm, so that you put the album out of your band so that you can go on tour and make the make money by putting butts exactly seats for a lot of people who don't know that so yet. i was like you know what let's just put this out there and hopefully i get this money back on touring but like 
Also, I just think I and you know it'll be the death of my career. But I'm just like such a believer <laughs> in like just put it out, just put it out there. Don't worry I, about what industry thinks. I, th- I mean, I know you're half there. kidding, but it's but I I wholeheartedly agree with you because I think yeah. that the that creative energy getting put out into the universe will come back at you some way. And I, and I and I think a lot of people all too often, and maybe I don't know if you've experienced this or not, but you think oh I gotta wait, it's gotta be the right time, it's gotta be perfect. And then you end up mm-hmm. putting less out there, right? Uh, we, I, I've made things. There's something we made, Sasquatch made about a, two years ago that never has come out, Put it out because we kept having these awesome things almost happen. And therefore, it's never seen. It was called A Week in the Life of a Stand-Up Comic. That's and cool. it was a documentary following me for a week. And it was a, a, like tracking me. And then at the end of the first day, I come back and my roommate is murdered. And so it's this document. <laughs> this, this is great. It's this documentary crew following me as I was supposed to just be talking my life, and it's me trying to solve the murder of my roommate. And it was so fun, and it just kept almost selling. And now it's never come out. And now we're like, what? The, what do we do with this thing? Like now it makes it no out, sense, man. really. That's the and thing now, is like you know I ran into you guys through Sasquatch, and that was just by luck. I forget what the you know, related video was that sent me down the rabbit hole that night of watching everything you guys did and tweeting about it and then you guys tweeting back and freaking out because you knew me from IGN or whatever. Like, Mm -hmm. that was just happenstance. And there's so much good stuff on there right now. But while we're talking about it too, your special, I made a short link, kindoffunny.com slash Danny now. You can go to and that'll take you right to your special so everybody can check it out if they're listening or watching later. But like making this and, you know, you know, you're doing it and then COVID hits. Like, what did COVID do for you? We've watched, you know, Nick go stir crazy and not be able to go out and do comedy well, and then go out and do it in a parking uh, lot and then yeah it's mm-hmm. funny because you said hey we're doing it in six places that you wouldn't traditionally think comedy would happen and i'm like i would i wouldn't be surprised like try me right i've done since covid hit we've done comedy on top of parking lots we've done comedy yep. to cars we've done comedy in parklets we've done comedy in parks like We've anywhere uh, done but the places where with, you think you with should bindles, be doing them. with tines, with uh, dumpsters. <laughs> mm-hmm. all good callback. Good callback. Thank you. Good one. I've, I've done. Oh, I've done every weird place, but I did it. But I, I was doing it always. And then co- when COVID hit, I mean, COVID was just brutal on stand up. Stand up just stopped, like a just a hit a wall. Are you doing Zoom shows, Nick? Uh, at all? Yeah, I've done. I've done some Zoom shows. I don't love them, but I think it's. I mean, there's Zoom shows, Zoom mics, do all, everything's Zoom. I hate them. Brutal. But I brutal, bought, yeah, horrible. horrible. But you know, you know. But, that's, but this is the crazy thing, though, is like I've done shows where I'm like, oh, I'm on a lineup with pretty decent, like comics I've heard of from like L.A. and New York, mm-hmm. and that's actually mm-hmm. kind of cool, right? Like, granted, none of us, this is not ideal for any of us, but there has been this weird like opportunity. Obviously, like we have you on our podcast right now, right? And prior, previously to COVID or prior to COVID. We would have flown you up. We would have offered to fly you up, and you would have been like, "That sounds great. I don't like you guys that much. I'm probably not going to burn busy, a whole I'm day coming I can't, out I can't like, burn to San Francisco. A day to go to San Francisco to be on your middling podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is, so there are so there are true. those advantages. <laughs> um, but as far as the Zoom comedy is concerned, it is it's fucking soul crushing. There's no such thing as doing well. I don't know. I don't know what you're. Have you had a good experience on Zoom yet? I did. I I found Nowhere Comedy Club, which did it as as best as I saw it done. So I started doing everything I could there, and then I, I like I I did a lot. Like I I really was like going crazy. I went crazy early in COVID. Yeah, fully just was like I've lost it. I also was like I literally think the week before COVID hit, I had a moment where I turned to my fiance and I was like, you know, I think I like I think my career is stable. Like for the first time, <laughs> feel good about it. <laughs> like Wait, for the uh, first time in my life, like I think I'm just going to be okay. And then wait, so, time, so out, time also, out there, time out there, because to yeah. set the stage, like where Crazy Ex Girlfriend had just wrapped at that point. Is that true? Or? Crazy Ex Girlfriend had just had wrapped, and I just filmed, I just filmed like uh, Auntie Donna, and I just filmed Corporate for Comedy Central, and then the week before everything shut down, I booked a massive role on a massive tv show uh like the kind of thing that's that i that was big 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 deal and then it was supposed to film the week COVID hit so i also was 
was, and I was telling Greg this before, but I had a late night set approved, ready to go. We were just figuring out what date, oh but it was God. good. Oh, my God. Really? I mean, it. That's I cannot tell you how many things just went crushing down in that first <laughs> bloodbath of a month. It was a bloodbath in my emails of just like every day being like, what's canceled today? What ain't going forward? It was wild. But well, then, that was like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was, I was like, but that my thing was like, but then it got okay. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I was going to say, I, I have to imagine that. I mean, obviously, you have a lot of friends in, in the trade. That must have been the same thing for everyone across Everybody. the board. Yeah. And that was the sad thing for me is like as a – I mean, I'm a comic, but I'm also a huge fan of comedy, obviously. And seeing the scene down in L.A. specifically and just feeling that draw down there because of all the great positive energy that was happening around places like the store. And just, I mean, basically every club in L.A. was just getting lit up every night by amazing talent. Um, and literally I would go every time I was in LA, I'm like, I'm just going to, I mean, I'm going to hook up with my friends that are comics down there and just, just experience the whole thing. Seeing that come to a grinding halt almost overnight is like heartbreaking for me. It was brutal. It was brutal. It was so sad. And just all of us, cause it's, cause you just take, you, you took it for granted also. Like mm -hmm. every night I get to see my friends. Yeah. Every night I go to a comedy club and I hang out with my friends. That's my life. Of course I would. And so just, you know, I, I literally went, we went to the, I went to the improv a couple of weeks ago just for like a hang it was the first outdoor comedy hang i've been to and it was like we and we all look really like it feels like we time traveled it just feels <laughs> yeah. like it's a year later and we're all exactly where we were before all this but we you just haven't seen each other in a year <laughs> we're just all a year older and traumatized <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I saw i saw um i went to a show i did a show about a week ago or two weeks ago at an outside brewery um actually a really pretty place the and uh, one of my, the best someone could muster for me was they looked at my hair and they were like, seems like you're uh, you're doing something very like purposeful with the hair. <laughs> like you got, and I was like, that's a great way of saying I look like <laughs> shit right now. <laughs> but it's a choice. That's the but most important thing. You, you look like garbage, but it's a choice. You look like yeah, shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'll, I've been wondering, like, because I feel like D just keeps de decorating the background just to kind of offset what's happening in the foreground. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really kind of confused yeah. with what's happening. I, I don't have a plan for it. I've reached out to uh, my wife to find me a stylist. I'm just I tired to my wife. To my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally the other day I was like, I was like, I'm too, I can't handle this face to face. So I texted her from the other room. I was like, I gotta figure out this Harris situation. I'm in over my head. D, I'm and in over my like, head. And I need help. Yeah, she texted me her stylist. She was like, you could. I have texted my the woman that cuts my hair. She said to me. You can go in for what's called a consult, and I'm like, that feels too fancy. Now I'm worried. I gotta pay her. What's the, how much money is a consult? Is that forty? Like, if it's forty dollars, yeah. I'm just gonna go to the barber and have him shave my fucking head. That's forty dollars right there. I have a lot of anxiety surrounding this situation, and then on top of that, um, Danny, one of our coworkers or co-owners of the company that usually on this podcast, Tim, couldn't be here today. Oh yeah, sorry, he got bit by two snakes when he stepped. Two on snakes, a rock. right? Oh uh, damn it! Uh, and so I know that Tim is like, hey you got long hair now why don't you let the like we'll figure out how the audience can give us money for you to cut a fucking mullet or something crazy like that so now i have to think like do i need to make this a business thing because our life is just being God, us I we're not talented you like you are sure you know you i want a mullet so mullet bad again i know okay but you see how i slid that in there you yeah, see how i slid I, that yeah, in there i, I inceptioned it i inceptioned yeah, it in sure. the audience i want a pc and a mullet i mean you could do it i the first day i got an actual haircut was like emotional after because Jess has been cutting my hair all of COVID, mm -hmm. which at first I felt was going pretty well. <laughs> and <laughs> Until you saw your friends. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was like that. that. Yeah, just slowly I was like, I think I look terrible. I think I look horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep in my brain my hair looks one way, but then I see myself on these and I'm, I'm just like, why would you not put the hat on? You got a hat right there. Just put it. In fact, you know, I'm putting it on. I'm putting it on. I've started wearing, I started wearing a hat just out of like pure panic. Now I actually have a real haircut, but I was like wearing a hat out of pure embarrassment. And then when I finally got my haircut, the lady would literally hold up. She would like hold up like the hair mm -hmm. and it would just be like this and she would just laugh hysterically she did that yeah. probably seven times during my haircut it was <laughs> she's like calling oh. people over to make fun of it she's putting she's it up like, on YouTube, instagram 
Yeah. She's like, who's been cutting what your hair? Your doing? wife? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my, pandemic. my wife refused to cut my hair. I have, I've, I'm the back of my hair is very, very long, but for some dumb fucking genetic reason, and I blame my dad, it grows out into more of a rat tail than it does into like a, like in my brain, Danny, I'm like, yeah, it looks a lot like Mel Gibson's mullet from Lethal Weapon 3, right? Like it, that's exactly what it looks yeah. like. Of course. But in reality, it looks like a sad old man trying to grow out. It, Hair and it just is a little ponytail, but, fucking rat tail thing it, in the back. It's isn't that because you had a fade, right? No, it's just the way. It's it just because my the back of my head has a wicked tail on the back of it. So when ah, it grows out, tail. and I try to get my wife to cut it, but she won't do it. Sure, it's a devastating <laughs> part of COVID. I, I I had a similar thing because I've never grown my hair long. I bet this has actually happened to a lot of guys. I've never grown my hair long in my life. I've mm-hmm. always assumed that if I ever had the time to grow my hair long, it would look incredible. Yeah, but incredible. Why would I ever do that? <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's and one of those things. I, I don't want to deal with the awkward teenage years of the haircut. Exactly, but I think that's but the I'm problem. A hundred percent. But I go, COVID hits, and I'm like, you know what? This is the chance. Let's yeah. try long now hair. The and then it, my hair just basically stops right here, mm-hmm. and then it just goes like this. Yeah, it just starts coming out, and I was like, what is? And it looked horrible. And then we had to get a haircut. You it was devastating. You got to just power through that, though. Eventually. Now, eventually. I'd like, I'd like, I'd like it if going. Kevin could turn his camera on right now so Oof. we can see the state of his hair, if that's possible, Kevin. Oh, because Kevin, minute, minute, Kevin has hair that hey, Kevin has amazing show hair, well on off. camera. Thank you, Nick. That's very sweet of you. Um, and it's got the right amount of wave. And it actually does look like Mel Gibson's hair from Lethal Weapon 3. But the other day, his wife straightened it, and he looked... I don't know. How would we what, see? What are you going to say here? What are you going to say? Well, what no, are you no, going to say? No, no, no. <laughs> he like looks a like creed. a – yes, that's a great way of putting it. I was going to say like yeah. a rock singer, but I was I couldn't, but I couldn't find down. a pull. Yeah. Post Can rock? we bring up the photo of you with your hair like that? Is Creed you not rock? Do we not count as Creed as rock, Danny? Oh, you can bring – I'm sorry. You can just turn it on. Turn on. Yeah, Everything froze. Let me see. Hold on one second. Oh, it's the wrong one. Look at this. Oh, I see that. Now, also, if I'm not mistaken, that's Five. a different brimless hat that Kevin's wearing right now. Oh yeah, that's a new one. Another brimless hat. Four. Of them. So it's, four? Yeah, it's How, why do? You, what are the colors? Oh my god! Oh my god! It's green, blue, uh, camel, and black. Yeah. See, now see, if my hair looked like that, I would keep it long all the time because that's God's gift. Look at this. Oh, look, God, at, oh, look at that. Come on. That's look what I it. thought it was going to look Put like. this man that's on a cross. Let's pray that, to him. I was going to say, that's a well-fed Put Jesus Put him on a right cross. There. Yeah, that's, that's Jesus. Right. <laughs> they pull well him down fed. and give that's him That's a supper. sweet way to say fat up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Do no, I got you. Take, oh, it's not. It's take not off your shirt. Take off your shirt because like it's bleeding into you. Yeah, exactly. It's bleeding into your black T-shirt so much. Yeah, we need to see We need to see it against all white skin. Oh, my God. Actually, if you take off, if you take off, hold on. Stick with me. If you take off this shirt and leave on the tank top, you yeah. will look exactly like the Creed li- 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 singer. What's oh, his yeah. name? Why am I, I blanking? Scott Stapp. Scott Stapp. Yeah, yeah. Podcast. I was going to say Scott Weiland, but that's not the name of the Yeah, because so, so the, thing yeah. With, the thing with Kevin's hair, though, is that oh. Kevin never really cut his hair like Nick and I would cut our hair, where right. we sort of shave it down way shorter on the back and the sides than it is on top. And that's why... I think Kevin always had his his hair a little bit more equal in terms of length, so that when it yes. eventually grew out, <laughs> look God at him. damn, look at this rock star right here. That's just unbelievable. It's, That's what I thought it was going to look like. Look at how thick it is in the front. The hairline's so <laughs> thick. Why are we just hairline's yeah. thick. It's yeah. it's layered in the back. It looks yeah. layered. It's gorgeous. It it's like, hold on, no, Kevin. It, it, you're not allowed to get dressed. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that as your boss. I'm getting you a photo. <laughs> you can't. Snap. You can't do that. <laughs> you definitely can't do that. I, I mean, at this point, we're, we're 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 on a line where Kevin's still smiling, so we're getting away with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're skating a Kevin fine line. This is laughing. a razor thin oh, margin. I, I have yet to say. We... I have yet to say anything but a compliment. I love it. I, I can't get enough of this. <laughs> I don't. I don't uh, yeah, but like, I don't I, know. I, if I, you're you're not his boss, ordering to stay shirtless. Sure, the guy with your pants. Oh, no, you Nick, throw up this photo. Throw up this photo of Scott Staff, and then we just for Halloween you got a new costume. You got to do it, Andy. You're gonna I'm, you're gonna see this tattoo. I need you to memorize it so you can draw it onto Kevin's arm. Oh, Come or Lord, just I just give Mike Tyson for no reason. This was, I wasn't prepared for this many people on the let's see camera. Well, you can. Okay, there, oh, you nailed it. CSS Games Daily. Who cares? It doesn't wow. matter. It's the yeah, point. A lot, it's the point. Going on wrong Why does he look so much like Colin Farrell? He does. He does. That was the style. That was the style back then. But look at how much he looks like Kevin right now. 
Like, he, yeah, we got to wide open. We got to give you the 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 tattoo, and we have to dye your hair just like a, a like a frosted of? brown. What is that a tattoo looks, of though? Some it looks of, like a Gaelic Aztec, or like no? something like that. Oh, I it looks, see. It looks like a tiger. In, in the shitty Discord quality, it looks kind of like Mayan or something. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying. It, lo- it looks like a Mayan. Oh, symbol. the font looks very Gaelic, though. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. That's what I, that's what I'm thinking. But also because yeah. I have Colin Farrell on my brain right now, I just assume that he's a descendant of Colin Farrell family. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now <laughs> the Lou in the definitely. chat is saying the kind of funny smiley make the tat the kind of funny smiley. Yeah, definitely. And I think jo- I know yeah. Joey is watching while she cooks. Joey, I don't know what month you need something for Patreon. There you go. Kevin asked Scott Staff with the kind like of funny smile. That's not going to do thing. very well, you know. You don't yeah, know these that. Kids, these kids will buy know, I'm, not, you know, I'm, pretty <laughs> sure, I'm pretty sure it's not going to move the needle. Yeah. You don't. Know I'm gonna. That. I'm you gonna turn my camera off it. now. It's a lot All of right, thank you, Kevin. Thank you for putting. One of my favorite things in life has been Kevin's ability to let us dress him up in various various <laughs> situations to so the point yeah, of like yeah, like yeah. It, like discomfort but also he's having a great time maybe like 49 like like 49 51 percent discomfort to, to having fun and that's, that's what, what like, all that's good art is that's like what all good at. art is you know what i mean razor's no, edge you yeah. think uh, she was enjoying up. every flying machine he drew no like, he no, he's some like this one be, sucks i fucking hate this one <laughs> Fuck it, it needs more shirtless dudes. <laughs> I wanted to bring up from for an earlier part of the conversation, way earlier. Like, this is four conversations ago. The scissors uh, are Danny, dumb. Danny, you mentioned some some things that, some opportunities that had to kind of go away because of COVID. And you, re- you didn't want to mention it, probably because of NDA reasons or NDA purposes. And you also mentioned the documentary thing almost got picked up a lot. Is there anything you could tell us that, like, any sort of secrets that, oh, it was almost going to get picked up? Like... By a cool celebrity. Like, is there a cool celebrity that you could say, like, Andy, when's the last time I was going to star in this Pitt. documentary with Leonardo DiCaprio. I'd be like, wow. Yeah. Like, you want a cool, cool, like, you want a cool celebrity story? Or you Pretty want much, a, that's what he wants. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. He just wants a cool celebrity oh, story. I'll tell you my favorite cool celebrity story. And not by cool celebrity story, I mean this one's sad but fun. Oh, I great. opened for Aaron Carter at a college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, like recently? Or? <laughs> All right. That was, yeah, my favorite. that was the best setup for that. Danny, you get what you did. At a college? That Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. College. College gigs. Oh. Nick, have you done college gigs? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't evolved to, uh, to the college gig circuit yet. So, no, so what I want to do. See, yeah. So before you even start with the story, um, if if there even is a story, is <laughs> is Aaron Carter doing stand up or are you doing music or is it just a mix mash of is it a talent show? So, what is this? So the co- so the college <laughs> market works basically. It's, it's a talent it's show. S- stand up on the way up, comics on the way up, musicians on the way down. We meet yeah. in the college world. That's Got where we it. tend to go. Okay. Got uh, it. With that said, no, we're not supposed to do that. What happened was I get a call from my college agent and she was like. This college, Muhlenberg College, double booked, double booked the night. So they booked both you and they booked Aaron Carter, the pop star. And so they want you to open for him. And I was like, that's a horrible idea. <laughs> Great. <laughs> because, but Danny, so because I have to imagine. The audiences aren't the same. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the, 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 the crossover things. of you and him. Yeah. Is then minimal. Very good. And very I was minimal. Like, I was like, How please don't make me this? do that. That's. Oh, this was five years ago, maybe. Okay, all right. But still, I mean, still, I was doing okay. Like, it was not a nice call to receive. Uh, and I <laughs> but, was but, like, but okay, but in the back of your brain, you're like, I gotta fucking do this, right? Because this is gonna be a hilarious story when the pain wears off. So at first, I was like, so here was the problem because I was like, okay, all right, uh, what do I have to do? 15? And then she was like, well, no, because they booked you for 45 minutes. Oh, no, oh, you got to do 45 minutes like, in front of Aaron Carter's like, audience. You can't, you can't let me do this. No. And she was like, oh, you're doing no. it. And I was like, all right. And so I called, I literally called every comic I knew. And I was like, what would you do? And we basically convinced ourselves. And this is a comic, this is a comic sickness way of thinking. Uh-huh. You always can convince yourself it's going to go okay. Yeah. Like you can be on a show, every comic bombing, the crowd hates comedy, and I'll still be like, wait until they meet me. Yeah, wait I got they this. Hear this one. I yep. got this. Yep. I got the joke. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's and so I was like, I I just convinced myself uh, they're there ironically, right? They they can't possibly be like 
like it's got to be a little ironic to see him so maybe i can kind of ride that irony right like like what am i like, doing uh, here huh it's like, like that's it's vanilla, I, vanilla ice is giving me... <laughs> danny jawless tonight hi everyone yeah you know, i mean i told i i understand like you so like vanilla ice is giving a concert right and all of us go right. just because we're like we have to see what sure. vanilla ice yeah. concerts looks right. like and then so a comment like... comes out you're like whatever it's, it's whatever right yeah exactly so i was like okay so maybe they're there like and then I remember showing up and I got to the venue and there was lo- literally a line of almost all, all women dressed to the nines. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to fucking bomb so hard. <laughs> this is going to be. How many was it? Was it a multi-night gig or was it just one night? Oh, thank God. It was only one night. Oh, thank, thank God. God. You should but have. I, and... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I, I, I want to hear what you could say. I was going to say, you should have negotiated like. All right, I have to do this forty-five minutes set. M&M. His concert is about an hour long or whatever. What if the last fifteen minutes of mine, first fifty minutes of him, like a duo Same kind of thing. improv set? <laughs> yeah, 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 improv yeah. set. <laughs> I'll tell you, there was a part of me. Once you're there, you're like, well, let's lean into this. I wanted so yeah. badly a Tanner to like really interact with. I he was because he's such an interesting celebrity, right? He's the mm. most like out. He's just. I was like, I want to get you so bad. And he was, you think he's going to be like, what's up, man? I'm Aaron Carter. But you're like, that's not really what he's like. And then he walked up to me and literally he just goes, what's up, man? I'm Aaron Carter. And I was like, oh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're exactly what I thought you were. He, he, uh, he watched my set. He was, he watched like chunks of it. But was I, he the uh, only I laugh? Up. He's like, <laughs> this crowd, this crowd stuck Aaron with me Carter loves this joke. <laughs> I'm Aaron Carter and I love comedy. <laughs> I literally, I was hoping so. I know I just wanted him on stuff. Like, that's a good one, but nothing. Instead, uh, <laughs> so wait, they sat with you premise, for 15 bro. minutes and then what happened? Yeah. And then they turned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then they were like, because in their mind, I was running the light. Yeah. They were like, sure. surely they didn't ask him to do 45 minutes. Clearly, this comedian won't get off the stage. And so. <laughs> You just felt them be like, enough. Like we laughed. Yeah. We were actually pretty nice to you. Yeah. And uh <laughs> and I also, like, of course, front loaded the entire set with all my best jokes. Yeah. So I also had nothing. I you're just had on fumes no, by the end. You're just like, yeah, I was oh fumes. Because I just because I was like, I just have to open with my strongest stuff. I have nothing. Like yeah. I have to get them on board. By the end, it was a I was just petering and there was anger and it's like that thing on stage where you hear people like kind of ang- you just hear angry like I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm so good. Like, just yeah. hear that while you're on stage you're like oh they're mad at me yeah. and <laughs> this is this is and, five yeah. minutes away from an actual riot they're gonna storm did you the at, stage did you at all like while you're up there or, or think about like like laying it bare I'm just like Funny story to start with. So we got double booked. <laughs> and so you have me for 45 minutes. I'm sorry. The, I wanted to so bad. The problem was I'm such a, I just don't like being yelled at so much. I was like. <laughs> That's just, you said it every day you wake up. You try not to get yelled at. I understand that. I mean, I, I was like, I don't want to yell. I just want to do it. I just want to get through it. I, I will say, though, I had to do 45 minutes. And I was, one thing they tell you when you do college gigs in particular is they're like, they're like, do, just do not leave the stage until your time is up because they will not pay you. And I was like, and I was like, I, if I'm doing this, I am getting paid. Yeah, I am getting paid for this. I'm telling when it my clock hit 45 minutes, I was like mid joke. And I was like, and then I goodbye. And I just <laughs> rinse off. it off. That well, stage. that's my time, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Give it up for Aaron like, Carter. <laughs> and then he had the greatest concert I've seen in quite some time. It was oh, you really watched good. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. If we're gonna be there, when you were done with the set and you're hanging out backstage, maybe having a libation or two, did it? Mm-hmm. Did you think to yourself, "There's a five percent chance you're going to become best friends with Aaron Carter"? Of course, yeah. of course. I was like, <laughs> "We're going to be good friends," but yeah. he is. Uh, he he just was like. <laughs> he also, I think, thought I ran the light, so he seemed a little confused too. But everybody was confused <laughs> by what like, was I happening. I thought this guy was the warm up act. He was just like yeah, five he was like, ten minutes, he was like, maybe. Funny. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. I, was like <laughs> I think he loved it. I don't think he loved my humor. In in general, college gigs, do you like doing them? I do, and I'm very yeah. rare. I most comics hate it. Most comics don't like the PC thing. 
I actually don't have a problem with it. I don't say anything on stage I don't believe. That's like one of my rules. Okay. So I'm like, I'm pretty good at like, if you get offended, and sometimes they do, but I'm always like, I know it, what I said I'd stand by. So I'm always like, oh, I'll stand by that point. Like, well, what's wrong with it? And it's just all they want. Sometimes, sometimes they're not offended. They just like are a little caught off guard. I just engage for a second and it usually clears itself up really fast. I've had no big okay. issues. I, okay. I'm, I like them, but I'm rare. And I, the only thing about colleges is it is the, uh, it is the chocolate box of gigs of like, you just, you, just you get a piece get. of, truly you show up and it's like sometimes you show up, it's because it's the same form you get for every show up like mm -hmm. this space this time get there at 5 30 for warm up and sometimes you show up and it is like particularly when i was just starting out i would show up and it would be a theater and i'd be like am i doing a theater tonight and they'd be like oh yeah it'll be completely filled and i'd be like you're like hmm. insane define define completely filled for me please <laughs> oh 2000 seats okay okay <laughs> yeah but i'm telling you i did like early on when i couldn't draw a ticket i would sometimes do colleges and i'd have a 500 seat theater filled with college kids that's amazing but then though. the next unbelievable yeah. what an experience and then next night same sheet of paper same exact <laughs> setup i quad. would show up and it'd be like five people and they'd be like do you need a mic and yeah. i'd be like oh my god here we are like we would and that's the thing you would just some of those college gigs like you just would have to basically build a stage for them they would just be like we thought you would like do it just sort of in front of the pool area <laughs> and we'd have people like over here and i'd be like okay so we're going to turn a light on over here right we're going to turn yeah. a light towards this section brutal yeah that's the thing where did for you the whole journey start? You know, you talked about being from Virginia. Like, did you just, did you want to do comedy out there and that drew you to LA or did you want to go act or how does that all shake out? I wanted to act first. I loved stand up, but I was scared by it because it's, sure. it was scary, you know? And so I was like, I don't want still it. Is, I went I to my, it's still pretty, but now it's like, now it's like a, you know, it's, now it's just a sickness that's built in me. Uh, just like a, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> But I, uh, I went to NYU to act, and then I was doing UCB and stuff. I was doing sketch, and I was like, stand up was sort of the one. I was like, I, I just don't, I just don't want to do it. Like it's just, it's. I would do it every now and then, and then right as I was graduating, I like went into this period where it was just like, oh, I can't audition. Nobody will audition me because nobody cares. Right. Nobody cares. I don't have any connections to the business. <clears throat> like it's over. And I just was like, oh, no, I'm going to, that's it. The, and then my friend was like, this is pretty crazy, too. And he does, I've never told him this. I've met him a couple times. But, uh, and he is no, but I, uh, my friend was like, hey, do you want to go see this guy tape his, tape a special? They're giving away free tickets. He was in, uh, he was in 40 Year Old Virgin. And I was like, all right. And I went and it was Kevin Hart's first special. Oh, Shut my up. God. And I sat in the third row for Kevin uh, Hart's first special. He was in 40 year old. He was one seat in 40 year old. That's version. how little. Cameo. That's how little he was known. <laughs> that's that's how like unknown. And I remember just sitting in the third row, being like, "I don't know who this dude is. I don't know if he has any connections. I didn't know he'd become who he would become, but I was like, right. this is undeniable. Like this guy is a freak." And I like next day like quit basically like gave up like stopped trying to act, stopped doing like the pay to play auditions, and was just like. It stand up every night. And then I just grinded in New York City for years and then oh, came out to shit. LA and just started grinding out here. And just what like a great what a great place to 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 experience that for the first time. Because I mean obviously coming up on in Northern California, which is not LA and definitely not New York, hearing stories of just the New York scene, you're like, Oh my god, I'm I don't think I'm tough enough for that. I don't think I ever will ever have what it takes to do New York. And to be clear, I recommend <laughs> any young comic I talk to, I'm like don't start in New York. Yeah. Huge mistake. Don't ever do Don't that to do yourself. Yeah. Because good. Because it's, now I hate when people yell at me. I can't do when people yell at me. <laughs> oh, Just super scared I, of everybody now. But it was good for me because I think it like beat the sweetness out of me a little bit. Because I was like, I was so like sweet and cute when I first started, and then everybody was like, all the comics were like, we hate you for that. Yeah. And I was like, you've got right. an and I like, you still love life. Yeah, they, what the fuck? Yeah, is they wrong were like, don't you? do that. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> we'll beat that they out of you. We'll get rid of that for sure. Yeah, yeah they yeah. literally did. And then when I moved out to LA, everybody was like, you know, you can be a little happy on stage. And I was like, oh, that's good. And now can I like I? sort of figured out. 
<laughs> sort of you figured out who I am. Middle but ground, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I came to LA and I was like, you're not allowed to even sell a joke. You say the punchline, that's it. Look them in the eye, nothing. Anybody sneezes while you're on stage, you yell at them until they leave the room or cry. Like it was like, that was my mentality. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that served you probably better than the opposite of like coming up in, in Northern California and just being like very timid with audiences because we appear audiences are a little particular. But I've had so many friends. I had a bunch of friends actually really high level guys up here um, who are like past the punch and, and were, you know, touring the, touring the country decide to move to LA right around December. And that was <sighs> on is bad. It was bad. Cause, cause <sighs> you know, you go down there and you're thinking, okay, now it's time to start, you know, figuring it out LA and grinding it out. And you probably have like a five to mm -hmm. 10 year plan in your brain. And that first year you're just like, well, I guess I'll start a podcast. <laughs> you know, oh, that's so tough. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, it's, because you have to completely restart when you go to a new city. Yeah, that's what I but hear. But Northern California also creates, for the record, creates some great comics. I remember oh, when Ali no. Wong, I remember when Ali Wong first showed up to New York, and like literally day one, everybody was like, "She's incredible." Yeah, that is. Who is that? Like she, she didn't. She like didn't have to. Re she took about two. It took her two weeks. Really, in New York before she was had before she was like on every show. That's amazing. That's it, that's anyway. that that gives me hope. That's awesome. But as, I know, as soon oh, as my comedy career takes off, I'm leaving these fucking losers. Yeah, behind. damn it, Nick. Between you and me, Daddy, I'm like, they're just fucking Nick. Nick, dust. after after this, after this, I, I want to I want to mess you because I think I'm going to go up to SF for some don't tell shows, and I want. I'm oh, a, cool. I want you. To, I want you to do them. I, I want to do. Uh, it would oh, be fun. that would be amazing. I would love to. That'd yeah, Danny, awesome. I know. I, I know you mentioned at one point uh, that you were sitting with your girlfriend or fiance, wife. I I forget. Fiance. Um, uh, yeah, but so you said, you know what? I feel like I'm getting respect. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah. like my life is starting to get a little uh, safer. Like my career is starting to get stable. At what, like, obviously that means more consistent work. But what? At what point did you feel like, holy shit, this is a big deal? Like I, I never expected to do this thing. <sighs> There's been so many. I mean, like, I'll say the biggest, biggest emotional thing was Colbert doing doing late night was like I cried so much that entire week. I just was like crying. I cried That's awesome. this I cried this I cried the night before I did like a visualization. I started crying. Cried on stage. Then caught <laughs> which caused a panic attack because then I like talked I remember like literally grabbing my girlfriend being like, we have a new problem. I think I'm going to cry mid-set. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll figure out all the other problems. This I like that we have problem. a new problem. <laughs> <laughs> Huge issue. Add it to the, add like, it to the whiteboard. We got another problem. <laughs> oh, and it was a big one, too, because I was like, you know, I like to do visualizations. So I was like, let's do the set. And I literally was like practicing set. And I was like, oh, yeah, my dad will be in the crowd. And I looked at my dad in my fake version oh, of the show. No, and I started crying. Bad. And I was like, yeah. that's not good. That's really bad. <laughs> We're going yeah, to have to figure like that out. It's a lot like the Joker, you know? <laughs> yeah. What <laughs> a, a weird parallel, um, there, Danny. <laughs> It was, and in, in a sense, I think uh, you know, in another, in an old universe, who knows what I could have become. But exactly. instead, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, and then I did the set, walked off stage, started bawling, and like I didn't stop crying. And, and like I remember, like the people who worked at Colbert were so concerned. Yeah, they yeah. were. You're like, no, I'm just getting. <laughs> you're the like trying out. to put. Yeah, positive. exactly. You're trying to put it into words. So that has to happen they kept, quite they, a bit. I would think they kept running up to me. They were like, they were like, it went well. I was like, yeah, I know. Like, no, I, know oh, I know. I know. <laughs> it did. You don't it? understand what it's like to be an artist. Okay. Did it's got to go cry? somewhere. Yeah. So that. Did Cole Bear you cry? <laughs> All right. You want to know? You want to know about. <laughs> yeah, we want to know about behind. behind this... He's like, stop being a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know a behind the scenes sad secret? Sure. You don't ever meet him. <laughs> you never. The way they do Colbert, they tape the comics on a separate night oh, and then they yeah. air them over the course of three months. Never got to meet him. Boo. It's a real bummer. That's I know. Isn't that sad? You know, if you watch the set, you could have lied about it the whole time. Maybe he's an I, asshole. And I think, and I do on a lot of shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great guy, Carson. Great guy. Yeah, we still, still golf. We still golf. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, that was awesome. But truth. truth what are you gonna say when you never. watch it? When you watch it, is there something that gives it away? Yeah, yeah. If you watch, if you watch my late night set, he goes like, yeah, "Please welcome Danny Jollis." And then I come out, and then he goes, "That was so funny at the end." And he, we never, he never walks over to me. Mm. You don't get that. You don't get the the come over to the couch or whatever they used to do back in the yeah. day. Carson, I know. But also, yeah. it was kind of nice because like that does happen on occasion. That can happen. 
still like it's less rare but every now and, then, and it was nice being like there is no couch it can't happen so there was right. no yeah, like no pressure did he like that it? does take yeah. a pressure yeah, yeah that's a good point that's a good yeah point. yeah because i remember i remember um i mean i i read a bunch of books but uh one of the books i wrote was i'm dying up here which if anyone listening to this hasn't read and you're interested in stand-up comedy please read it's a great read but they were talking mm-hmm. about the importance of the couch and the importance of getting waved over and like basically if johnny sat you down on the couch and wanted to talk to you you were in you were you were that was like you had a tv show coronated. you had a tv show you, the next yeah. day you were done. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for a lot of comics like that, that level of, of, you know, being seen is, is, is huge, but oh. I don't know. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I couldn't have that. The, the pr- I can't even imagine the pressure of doing that. Cause like the, the pressure of being on stage and performing, you can, you know, to your earlier point, you're like, yeah, you probably, you probably get nervous, but at this point in your career, the nerves are just something you understand how to deal with. You're going to go out there, you've mm-hmm. done your material, you're probably working on some new stuff and you can get out there and have fun. I imagine, but add the camera, the lights, and all the rigmarole that goes along with it, just sitting in the green room must be like nerve wracking. Oh, I was a mess. And I and and it's I am completely dead inside when it comes to like stand up at this point. Like I feel nothing. Like people <laughs> You're always just like a fucking robot. I open for Aaron like, Carter. Oh, people like always are like talking to me before a show and they're like, Do you need to like focus or anything? I'm like, nah, I don't know. No. It's, it's just when I walk and I do it. But like Oh my God. It's you're also in the Ed Sullivan Theater. Like it's just like it all hits you. It just hits you in waves, you know? And like I even did the thing and then they call you down. They're like, It's your time to come down. Like and you're like I don't want to. And then I was like pacing. I did the thing it's so embarrassing where I was like all of a sudden my throat got super dry and I was like, Can I get some water? And like all of a sudden a bunch of PAs were like, He needs water. I was like, Oh, <laughs> we just have an so emergency. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm that guy. I'm so that just, guy. I know. I was like, oh, I'm the guy that's causing the he needs water thing. Like, I'm trying to convince, you know, I'm trying to look like I'm cool. Oh, it was horrible. And then, but that's also why you do it so many times. Cause I will say, I was so nervous, so scared. Literally, they handed me the mic. I went completely calm. I had the most, I remember every second of that set. I even remember, and it, you can see it if you pay very close attention. There's a moment during my set, I'm, I'm doing a joke. And they laugh and I look up at the ceiling and the ceiling changes colors at the Ed Sullivan Theater. It just like the lights change. That's cool. And I was like, wow, that's cool. Literally, it was like, that's cool. The lights <laughs> change colors. So yeah, the presence of mind to be so calm that you notice the lights. And then I literally went, I literally go in my head, you can see me go, I am so calm. Wow. That's cool. That's fucking and then cool. That's really cool. and then walked off stage completely calm, handed the guy the mic bald immediately like it all it's like, like it's like, like <laughs> the mic is like just like channeling all the energy and as soon as you give it away it's just frantic craziness oh my god and then it was just gone and it was done um that's definitely the biggest one like crazy x got me some crazy x like we did like radio city uh music hall which was just like stupid just stupid big yeah uh, no, yeah st- stuff like that was just like crazy i mean just crazy acts like we did just the musical theater element of it all was so crazy Mm -hmm. because it was like stand up like i've done the big theaters but i've never like to do a big theater and be like you're gonna sing and dance was like such an actor dream that's i mean wow right when you're performing on that level and you've got thousands of people screaming for you or like you've got their attention that's got to be amazing screaming Oh yeah. yeah. Also, like it's such a rabid fan base of that show that like, just their reaction to you was like, it's just so crazy. So what's crazy. that like? That was what's wild. that like? Did you require? Well, I have questions about Crazy X and, and stuff there, but before then, let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. And normally, I kind of ad lib the the ad reads because I know what's coming and I know how to hit all the points and stuff. But this one's special, and I want to make sure that I do the copy justice because it is something special. I know that none of you watch porn, but just in case you have any friends that do, you'll want to pay attention to this. With everything going on in the world, governments have increased their surveillance. They're using your devices to track your location, movements, and in many countries, your internet activity. You don't want to be literally caught with your pants down and one of the best ways to keep your online browsing activity private by using ExpressVPN. When you use ExpressVPN, your internet connection is rerouted through a secure encrypted server so you can surf the web anonymously without anyone looking over your shoulder. Look, I know you probably think all you have to do is use incognito mode and no one can see what you watched every last... I'm not, I'm not going too far with this, you know what I mean? There's just a lot of videos that you could be watching, but you're wrong. Even when you use incognito mode, your internet provider like Comcast or AT&T can see every single website you visit. And if you live on campus or use the shared Wi-Fi, your network admin can 
can too. To be honest, it's kind of scary. That's why you should be using ExpressVPN. I use ExpressVPN because, oh, I don't know, not me, but I, you know, friends sometimes use my computer. Uh, with that ExpressVPN, you're giving people a free license to peek over your shoulder and see all the freaky shit you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> they put that. They wanted me to say that. I love it. Uh, so protect your privacy today and get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Visit expressvpn.com slash kind of funny. That's E X P R E S S VPN.com slash kind of funny for three months free with a one year package. I'm telling you, ExpressVPN, all jokes aside, all that stuff, it's great. It's awesome. It just works and uh, it's a good thing to have. ExpressVPN.com slash kind of funny to learn more. Yeah, look, please. Let's go into the sponsors. No, now we're out of it. You just now, you, now you see. Come on, we're out of it now. Sorry. That sponsors we don't, are done. We used you don't to have make to people, listen to them. We used to make the guests oh. sit through the sponsors, but now we don't. We don't do that to you anymore. Greg, oh, I was like ready waited. for it. I, I always sit through the sponsors. We could have waited. For Kevin, if like, you don't train them now, they'll think you can walk all over them. <laughs> oh, are you what? Like don't worry about it. All right. He doesn't like being yelled at. That's his fear. I know it. I'm using it against him. around him. You know what I mean? He told you in trust. We told him. Show we use everything against them if he ever said anything. Don't worry about I'm it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I feel I, I want to say you and I, the first time we ever talked about Crazy Ex Girlfriend was like maybe right after season one. It was early on because you were like, Oh, yeah, I was doing this thing and I was just a, it was gonna be this little thing, but then it started getting traction. I don't know what's going on with it. And then you talk about playing Radio City. Like, what's the story there? Did you did you start on that show expecting just to be on and off, or was it going to be this giant thing you were going to be a part of for the whole run? Oh, no. I thought, first off, I was, it was my friend Rachel. Rachel, you know, my, I've been known Rachel since college. Uh, one of my, at this point, like, at this point, she's one of my oldest friends. And she gets a TV show, wonderful. The show, she... <laughs> I mean, truly, it's like amazing. It was an amazing experience. You know, having your friend get a TV show is the coolest feeling. It seems she like tried, it'd be cool. Yeah. She starts like doing it. She's filming it. I'm not involved in any way, but I'm just like so supportive and happy for her. Then she's like, I'm trying to get you like a cameo. That was like literally the mindset. It was like, can we just get Danny a cameo? And so I auditioned for a role, didn't book it. Classic me. <laughs> then, <laughs> classic my style of auditioning come in again the cast for another for like a i think it was just a dancing lawyer i think i had one line <laughs> and the casting director was like can you actually read for this other role so the casting director flips me to this other role i book that one i say like three things in season one that's really it season but they, there was this rumor of like if it gets to season two this character is in the office so there's a chance he could come back and all of a sudden in season two they bring me in, but they bring me in with this bit of you keep getting fired, which, which is to like, me. Is, did you think you're going to get kicked off the show every time you get yeah. fired? That's <laughs> All right, that's our last episode. <laughs> Literally. Guys. See you later. <laughs> yeah. That's like the killing amount the character of times, off every day. <laughs> that's terrible. It was horrible. And I was like, because because they were like, and, and, and I really believed in my heart the first time I was getting fired, I was just supposed to leave the show. Yeah. And so. I was like, but it, so it was great because I really had this moment. I'll, you know, it was Georgia. It was like my, my, I had this little song that got cut off. It was a big moment. And I remember literally being like, what an amazing experience. Literally looking around the crazy exit being like, what an amazing experience. Got to be a part of an incredible show. This show is like really starting to build momentum. I got to be a part of it. How cool. Then they're like, oh, they want to bring you back. And I'm like, oh my God, I get to be more a part of it. Then they, I, they bring me back and they're like, you're going to get fired again. It's like, all right. Great. So I get like three what different times. What an amazing times, I'm like, experience. <laughs> three different <laughs> the times. same thing. What, yeah. It's like every single time I was like, what an amazing experience. Oh my God. How cool. And then uh, season three, they paired me up with, uh, at the end of that season, they really like paired me up with Scott Michael Foster. And we started like really being a team. And it was like at that point where I was like, I think I'm a part of this thing for potentially for good. Yeah. And then the show just starts getting bigger and bigger, and the fan base is just getting bigger and bigger, and it was just wild. It was wild. I, I get like emotional talking about it. That's awesome. It's like that's, that's you a, know that's to be so a, the experience you to want, be a, right? To be a part of something good in Hollywood is yeah. like so rare. It never happens. Who's a part of a good thing? It's like impossible. You know, you particularly yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> so many things are okay and like great. You know, and it was like to be a part of something that was like really genuinely great. And fun and like the cast and I like I'm still close with every one of the cast members. 
and that's right. It's like well, and just something that lasted, right? Too, because like there's so many things that I mean, obviously, I'm very particular, and I have my own things I like and things I don't like, which our audience will let me know most of the time are just shit opinions. (laughs) But I, when I love something, I'm like, it's I guarantee this thing's one season and it's gone, right? So to have something go multiple seasons and actually like be good and have a rabid fan base is it is very much a rare thing. A an hour long musical theater comedy that's cut co- that's covered <laughs> no, that's tackling me mental a- health. <laughs> it's like what are we even trying for? You what pitched me on that idea. Is- I'm like, you're gonna get a half a season. It's gonna get yanked. <laughs> oh, oh, for sure. And I think Rachel, like, I think even like before I was on it, like Rachel and I were talking. About, she's like, I don't know, you know. I but she just believed in it. She believed in you know. It was like that thing of and CW was so cool. It just was very lucky. The whole thing was very wonderful. lucky. That's that was really so cool. great. Yeah, I wish I, I know it's like it's almost like a bummer. It's like almost like a bummer on podcast because I'm like, it's just a wonderful experience. I have nothing to say. It's negative. <laughs> there's no, there's no, that's, no I mean, that's super yeah. great. And like and one of the cool things now is like, obviously, like you have you have that pedigree, right? You have that as a calling card of of that's you came up and that was the thing that kind of got you where you're at. And that's I always think that's super cool. Like, I, I love when people have those great experiences and then like. You know, you can, you're obviously going to go on to do other stuff and, and do comedy specials and do awesome stuff. And you'll probably get on way, way more shows and movies and all that stuff. Um, but to have that one back there, and we're praying for you. <laughs> we're praying God. for you. But <laughs> we're having that at the foundation is always such a cool thing. I, I, always, I always thought that that's cool. Yeah. You know? No, it's and to to have it be with your friend also, like a, yeah. a genuine friend who like yeah. – was there you know so it wasn't even like as scary as it probably should have been because you also realize you go to acting school and they teach you a bunch of stuff and then you show up to a set and you're like i know how to do none of these things anyone's asking me to do <laughs> like they don't teach you how to do it oh i know my, my my wife uh grew up in la and she used to go on auditions and stuff a lot um and she was like i would be like yeah. she would tell me about things that they would ask her to do and she was like yeah you just always say yes I was like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, if someone asked me if I skateboard one time, I just said yes. I was like, well, what happens if you have to skateboard? She goes, you fucking figure it out. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay. That's very intimidating. That to me would be oh, yeah. give me anxiety all night long. Oh, for sure. The amount of times Rachel would like someone from like Crazy Ex-Con and they'd be like, hey, if we did this kind of a number, could you like dance that? And I'd be like, 100%. Yeah. Feel no extremely problem. confident I could do that. Yep. I <laughs> That was my mentality. And then I would say that all through learning the choreography, which I was bad at. Uh, I would just like. I'm so good Cat at this. Is, I'm incredible at this. I literally, <laughs> well, guys, I literally do a terrible opening for Nick Carter. We did a little Carter. bit like this, but this is a more amateur. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I see. Okay, we're we're done. Hard on the professional down. moves. Yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> I would just do that. I literally was what I would do. I because I would do it badly, but I I knew I would just work. I would just work really hard. So I was like, I would just literally be like, I have to learn it tonight on my own. So the whole day that we were like learning it in front of everybody, I would just be horribly off, and Cat would always be like. You got it, Danny? I'd be like, feel extra got it. Oh no, it's it's in me. I'm gonna like, get it on my nail it on the day. <laughs> you're yeah, no, crying, so you're good. crying as soon as you leave the set. <laughs> yes, literally, I get in the car and be like, I have no clue how to do this. Oh <laughs> my god. Three I'll in the never... morning, you're in the park across from your parking lot. You're like, that's it. <laughs> this is oh, figuring yeah. it out. Babe, uh, we yeah. have another problem. Oh, yeah. We have another problem, babe. <laughs> another problem with the whiteboard. Put it on the whiteboard. <laughs> Put it on the whiteboard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh right. man. All right, so right now we're up here with your career and you know how great it's going. But I want to go back to when everything fell apart and fall, <laughs> fell through, right? Because yeah. Gondor's Condor writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like you can to be part of the show and says, greetings, guys. Unfortunately, I write in from one of the lowest points. Uh, I recently accepted a job that, after eight job changes in four years out of college, was finally something both in my field and livable. However, when I went to the bank, when I went to my bank to do something for the onboarding, the teller saw nearly every possible red flag in the job. I am I am down bad right now. So my question is: uh, A, when's the last time you were down in your career? And B, most importantly for me, how did you recover? Thank you for your time, Gondor's Condor. Uh, like I said, jumping back to way earlier in the podcast, I feel like we were there already, where you're like, everything's yeah. coming up roses, honey. We're li- I, I, my, I, my, I'm solid in my career. Then it fell apart, yep. like. How do you get out of that? What did, what did it mean to you to take that journey? Oh yeah, and 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 Gondor's Condor. Uh, I, I'm gonna uh, let me say this first off, which is I had had down moments in my career many times. I've had some sure. bad breaks in my career, but this past year, this one blew them all out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> everything else that had ever happened to me, I was like. It didn't even touch the just punch after punch of those first three months in particular of just what project do I have? Where is it gone? And um, 
the quick and in, in the answer, and so, yeah, it was just brutal, and it was so sad. And then the answer of what to do, in my opinion, is go back to the things you can control. Mm. That mm. is always the answer because I can't control Hollywood. I cannot control, certainly can't control COVID. Can't control Hollywood. Can't control even getting auditions. Like, I can't get myself auditions. I need somebody to to get me in the room. Uh, that's where, you know, I have reps and sometimes they give me room for things. And sometimes there are things I see go by and I'm like, I'm perfect for this. And they just can't get me in. And I never even audition for it. I can't control a lot of stuff. What I can control is the art I put out and the way I treat people around me, which I think is also a big, a very much a part of everybody's career that I don't think is talked about enough. Being a good person is a great career move. Mm -hmm. So I can control that. And I focused, I really focused on that. Like in particular the past six months being like, I'm going to get into as much zoom as I can. And I'm going to, I'm going to write new material and I'm going to write a movie. Um, and I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to, I'm going to come out of this good. And I'm going to make a special that special that I made. I'm not going to sell it to a streamer. I'm going to bet on myself because mo I don't have the momentum just to take the credit and I'm going to bet on myself, put it on YouTube and all those things I think have helped me start to, I'm still starting to climb out, but start to climb out. And so that's my, my biggest thing to you is like one, you're allowed to feel sad. Don't be like scared of feeling sad because you're, that's an okay emotion, but then sure. just go, what can I control? right now and focus on those things yeah i love i, I love that you advice. i love that you start off with you think it's bad now <laughs> like <laughs> that's basically how the answer was <laughs> which is like it, it it can get worse but how are you going to find what it takes yep. to get out of that situation truly because i because because you can't tell somebody like it's gonna like it will get better it will get better but when it gets better like heart it, i can't no but none of us can control that so sure. it's like, what can, what can we control? Because it, it can be, look, I, a month into COVID, I was like, okay, this is the down point. This is it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this is bad. all right, this, this is, gonna is get the it. darkest. Then it was like month two. It was like, well, this is even darker. We're even worse. Like, oh my God. And it was like, and it just kept, and then it was, and it took me a while to get to the place where I was like, I was like, I have to just stop waiting for it to get better. Sure. And I have to just like refocus yeah, and focus yeah. on me. That's Are you still advice. doing Hope auditions that. and stuff? Are you doing Zoom auditions? They're starting to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done yeah, Zoom yeah. auditions. I've, I, uh, and they are weird. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> are, they, are they even weirder than the in-person camcorder thing? Oh, I loved in-person. Yeah. I loved an in-person audition, and I'll you never. You seem like the kind of the person that again. knocks it out of the park when you go in person, where you go in and people just like they just love you. I'm charming. Um, yeah. I can be <laughs> <laughs> charming and lover. humble. You're very humble, also. That's what I've always appreciated about. Well, Nick, you you weren't know, you weren't here for Danny to just say where you had just left for a bit, but Danny was mentioning stuff that we always mention is being a good person will take you really really far if you're talented at what you do. And mm -hmm. like, I could tell that Danny walks in. It's like, yeah, he's not going to be a dick to anybody. <laughs> like, sure. That's sure. Not gonna rule number dick. one, you know? Not going to be a dick. Get, you know, some of these cast directors also like, they're seeing so many people. And sometimes like, sometimes also you read it. Like there's roles I read for where I'm just like, not me. Yeah. Just not me. So I would really go in with an attitude of like, I'm not auditioning for this role. I'm going to not. I'm going. I'm just doing. Going to have a good time in there, and let's like let's build a connect, uh, and let's hopefully build a connection with this cast yeah. director. Sure. And some of yeah. these casting directors have really like, some of these people are great people, and they become your friends. So that's like. But then you go on Zoom, and then yeah, it's sure. just like these. Ugh, it's just h hard, and you're like, hello. It, like I said, yeah. I'm doing this thing. Like I said, and it's good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like okay. it feels God, hard to make a good first impression over a webcam chat. You like it, oh. it? You don't have that that personality there. There's like a kind of a barrier almost. It is. It's such a. It's so hard. It's so hard. But uh, we just we make do, and we send a lot of self tapes also, which are real sad. You haven't lived till you have to just drag your fiance out of her at least twice a week. I'm like, you need to read this role. And I'm so sorry. And, then <laughs> and she I just apologize. watches me. <laughs> and she just watches me have a breakdown because I can't can't do it. I'm never happy. And then oh we have had some kerfuffles over self tapes. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not re- you're not giving me what I need. You're not giving me what I- no, this is what it says though, and this isn't my job. I'm trying to help you. I know. She works in development too, so she really does have notes sometimes and it mm. like drives me mm. up a wall. Yeah. <laughs> this is my interpretation, yeah. honey. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to do my yeah. I know. I'm like I'm like she's like, You're too big. And I'm like, it's not too big, it's a big character. Like and I just start <laughs> you're I'm too like, big. I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> what what Danny? What does the setup look like? Do you have like the the can lights with the with the drapery behind you? Like, what's the? I got. Do you have any special setup? I, just, I mean, kind of. I've got a. I, I mean, you know, we have a over there. There's curtains to the window, so I have to film at night. I pull the curtains in. That's our backdrop. Pretty Perfect. good. Yeah. By the way, it took me five months of COVID to figure that out. <laughs> you just um, back with the entire time. It's a silhouette talking. <laughs> Literally. I would be like, I'd be like, I mean, look, what am I going to do? Wait till night? It'd be stupid. I mean, five months to figure that out. Wait till then night. I, have a, oh, so I mean, I'm such an idiot. Uh, then, then, then I have a little ring light thing that goes over. Had to buy a new iPhone during COVID because I was like, I guess we're filming things. And the stream cam is great for streaming, but it's not good for actual tapes. Why is so that? I was like, it just doesn't look as good. You know, oh, you want you want that pro. You gotta have four K. That crisp. Yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah, get that. Yeah, yeah no, you gotta get sixty frames a second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and by the way, that took me a while to figure out because earlier I was like, well, I bought this streaming cam, got to use it for the audition. Right. And then it slowly was like, the iPhone's better. This is stupid. <laughs> but it's a whole this setup. I mean, I have to like literally take over the entire. I have to move everything. Sure. We've also been in a one bedroom this entire time. So uh, we. Uh, that is, so so that's that was that was a question I had earlier when you when you talked about that. You've taken over the living room. How has that been for you? Because I know Greg has 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 expressed the difficulties of having his wife uh, have the bedroom and him being the boisterous person that he is being in in, in the living room. That? It's not ideal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> would you say, uh, Greg? Would you agree that it's uh, not an ideal situation? We're moving um, next month. Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm right there. We are <laughs> like too. this is not. We're moving next month. What too. It was. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We're no, we're moving. Like we literally just sold this place and we're moving because we were like this is insane. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not great. But the but the but. We've gotten through it. Like you just, sure. and also exactly. it ebbs and sort of like COVID. COVID in general has been this like, right? Just this roller coaster of highs and lows. So it's like, we would have our periods where it would just be like, I'm going to kill you if you have to make me do one more self tape. And I'm like, well, I can't even like, you know, and she's, by the way, she's had a job this whole time. Whereas I've been like f- flouncing about doing one. Whatever I've been doing, doing my Zoom shows. It, you're like, it's, it's like it's just you know, so has, hard, and you haven't gotten out of your you, out of your PJs. You're still in the five o'clock in the afternoon. The peanut butter yeah. jelly sandwich. Yeah. yeah, me and my me and my hobby of the week, as I refer to it, because it's just what hobby am I doing this week to like fill the time? Right. And she like has a real <laughs> job in there. She's actively like, like working and trying to just hold it. And it was making it, ice it, sculptures. Like, what the fuck are you doing now? Like, stop. Oh, I don't know. Know. Oh, oh, my own <laughs> I got a, oh, I, I've done everything. I got a piano over here. I got, I got a, a putt putting thing over there. I got super into fifty, I fifteen video games. Then I got really into I'm, uh, everything, everything. I've done a sure. week of everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah. I think I think when when COVID first hit, I think I remember opening up Garage Band on my on my MacBook. And I was like, I'm going to get into music. I'm going to start making some music. And, and I, then I made a track oh, yeah. and I showed it to my wife. And she was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I thought maybe that would be a direction we go in. You're it right. Really reminds me, it reminds me a lot of um, – that reminds me of this one sequence in Parks and Rec where Ben, who's played by Adam Driver, uh, gets fired and then gets really, really into claymation and <laughs> – he gets really into claymation and takes like months and months to make a scene, and the scene amounts to maybe four seconds, <laughs> like a total tape that, the guy that he's recording. Out of bed. He's like, wait, that yeah. can't be right. That can't be right. <laughs> yeah, like he's been working forever, or whatever. But he essentially, at one point, has a, the little claymation person, and it's kind of a viral meme on Twitter that always pops up, and it says. 
can a depressed person make something like this? <laughs> like, because somebody's like, Ben, you're depressed right now. And he's like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> so I just, I just imagine Nick like, babe, check out this song. <laughs> She's like, it honey, was, you're, you're depressed right now. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. So I, 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 there were the two things that I was like, I'm going to absolutely do. I don't care how COVID, how long COVID goes for, I'm going to do this thing. One of them was, I mean, this is where I was, I was going with this. Learn how to play piano. I wanted to be able to play piano like Chevy Chase every time he would go to a party or do anything like that. And I got about, I got maybe like three days into learning um, dancing in the you. like dancing in the moonlight. And I was like, this is really hard. It's really hard. I can't get my left hand to do something for my right hand. Wait, so you so were that's like, when Garage like, Band came in. Yeah. I would Nick, love it because you, you know like, Nick would get good at one song and then he would do that. He'd he'd have his moment. He'd be at the p bar, the party, yeah. and fucking kill dancing in the moonlight. And be like, all right, play something else. He's like, that's all I know. <laughs> no, I would literally have to go like this. I'd go, what? I have to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like the song. My it's like wedding singer where he just keeps singing. Give me time. Really want to hurt yeah. me? <laughs> You're like, get off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> did Did you do musician, Nick? No, I, I mean, I took piano lessons a long time ago and I played, I played music for a really long time. So I, I know, um, the core mechanics of the piano, but I remembered very quickly why I quit piano, which was, <laughs> that's that basically, this is exactly really my story. Hard. Yeah. It's yep, really hard. This is exactly my story. I, mm -hmm. I bought a piano cause mm -hmm. I was like, that's going to be my thing. That's the thing. <laughs> can Would you, can cause you know, what you, cause Danny in the back of your brain, you're like, everyone all these fucking idiots, all my dumbass friends are wasting their time. They're just mm -hmm. biding their time until they come back. And I'm going to come back with a skill. I'm going to come back and yep. blow people away because I know yep. – what did you do, Nick? Well, I mean I just I just picked it up during COVID. Piano. I'm a, I'm a concert-level pianist now. I'd like to oh, imagine yeah. Danny buying a grand piano and be like, we have a one-bedroom. What are you doing? <laughs> we don't have room for this. <laughs> Put boxes on it. Boxes underneath it. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> the keyboard. That's, Look at that so sad space, piano. <laughs> what a yeah. sad it's, piano right there. It has, it, at least it hasn't evolved to being like the drying rack where there's clothes on it and there's like a yeah. book on it. And like it's just being used I to know. the table. <laughs> But what did was, your wife say when you bought the key when you bought that that, that keyboard that piano? She was she was okay with it. You know, I think she was excited. <laughs> <laughs> I think at that point it was like it was like really she was really we were really battling a Danny not losing his mind game. Mm -hmm. So I think she was hopeful. <laughs> the whiteboard that this, was full. The whiteboard yeah, was full. She was yeah, yeah. She was really hoping it would work, honestly. If we're gonna be cards on the table, she was like, please let this work. I hope yeah. the hope he gets uh, this victory. This, he needs a he needs a dub right he now. Needs he needs a victory. Win. <laughs> I think I I think that one directly followed me trying to learn Hebrew on Duolingo. That one no, died yeah. fast. I tried Italian. I tried Italian on yep. Duolingo for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I tried. And, and what's and again, I have Same. context. I took two French. years of Italian in college, and I was like, I'm gonna fucking these idiots are wasting their uh -huh. fucking time. Greg doesn't speak; uh -huh. he barely speaks English, let alone a cooler <laughs> language. I'm gonna blow him away with how much. It, a week later, I'm like, get this app off my fucking phone. I did. It keeps Spanish. reminding me that I haven't touched it in six get months. Get out of here, you fucking owl! I'm not coming yeah. back. I'm not oh going to play God. this game. I did <laughs> Spanish you have full for the hearts. Pump. Yeah, the problem was like I did the Spanish one and all the entry things are so easy. It's like yep. I this is so I know all I of this know stuff. It. How do I fast forward to like my knowledge area cuz I I can understand Spanish pretty well, but I can't speak very well. And then it's just what but of course I spent like $80 for the full year. That's a good deal. <laughs> like fucking idiot, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I am the the breaking moment for me cuz it it occurred to me at a certain point. I remember the I remember I was doing it for like a week or two. And it was a moment where I was like, oh, yeah, I'm bad at learning languages. This was like a problem in school. I'm bad at this. Yeah. And Dude. but I'm very good at games. I'm pretty good at games. So I got very good at beating Duolingo mm -hmm. and I would beat these lessons, but I wasn't really learning. And I was yeah, like sure. kind of concerned about it. And then at some point I said, because she tried to learn with me at first, then she quit. And then like I was probably three weeks past her at this point. And I said something to her. She was like, that's not right. It's this. And I was like, I'm done. Fuck. I'm done. I've been doing <laughs> three weeks more than you, and you just corrected me. I yeah. can't. Not the, none of this is in here. Because you're going done. too big. You're like, I'm not too big. Damn. Oh, sorry. Uh, hold on. Save for the post show. We're, we're yeah. switching to the post show. Uh, yeah. Danny, you've been fantastic. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so much for having me. This was just lovely. 
Remember, you're not leaving yet. You have the post show to do with us on Patreon. Of course, of course, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Don't don't you fucking hit the button. I see you looking at the buttons. Don't hit the buttons. Uh, if you, ladies and gentlemen, aren't coming over to patreon.com slash kind of funny for the post show, of course, where you get the show ad free and write in as well. No big deal. Remember, you should go to kind of funny.com slash Danny. Get Danny's new stand up special. Uh, it is up right now. It is completely free. Six parts of full comedy special is available right now at kind of funny.com slash Danny. Please, please, please. Please. Uh, what else can people to... do to help you out? You, I mean, obviously, Twitter follows. You want that? You want some Twitter follows? Yeah. I'll take some Twitter follows. I'll take Instagram follows. But the uh, honestly, the biggest thing is like uh, just going to that thing, going to that special, and watching it. And if you like it, sharing it. Like, sure. It is just completely going to be the ground. It is completely up to the to the people, and, uh, <laughs> and you know that's it. So that's that is truly like if if you liked me at all. Uh, give it a chance because I also think it's a really good special. I think you'll genuinely enjoy it. On one of my uh, YouTube accounts, I let the whole thing play with ad block off. Wow! During this show, because wow. I'm that much of a supporter. Holy that's shit! Look at this guy. Right welcome, now, guys. as we record it, it's got sixty nine thousand views. Let's double it, everybody. Come on. Let's get out there and do it. What do you say? Uh, Danny, again, thank you so much. Again, kindoffunny.com slash Danny. Again, patreon.com slash kindoffunny to come watch Danny do the post show with us. Uh, but if you're not coming over there, I will remind you, this is the Kind of Funny podcast. Each and every week, twice a week, we come to you to bullshit about whatever it is we want to bullshit about. You like that? You go to Patreon. You have a good time. But if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can get each and every episode twice a week. YouTube.com slash kindoffunny. Roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe each and every week for now post show to do but until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you